Hello to everyone. On behalf of ISF College of Pharmacy, I, Dr. Saurabh Kose, welcome you all. As you know that ISF College of Pharmacy, under the aegis of IQAC cell, is organizing non-stop ISFCP online dialogue series, where eminent pharmaceutical sciences scientists from various sectors are giving their orations online. In this series, today we have Dr. Junaid Tantre with us, Assistant Professor, NIMS Institute of Pharmacy, NIMS University, Rajasthan, India. Uh, before going ahead, uh, I would like to read out the brief bio sketch of uh, Dr. Junaid Tantre. Dr. Junaid Tantre holds a Bachelor of Pharmacy and Masters of Pharmacy in Pharmacology with honors from Uttarakhand Technical University. Dr. Tantre has done his project in pharmacovigilance at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Rishi Case, for six months. He began his career as an assistant professor in Hari College of Pharmacy and later moved to JBIT College of Pharmacy. Currently, he serves as an assistant professor in NIMS Institute of Pharmacy, NIMS University, Jaipur. Dr. Tantri has contributed significantly to research projects and published in international journals. He is a lifetime member of APTI and has authored two books, that is Concise Pharmacovigilance and Computer Applications in Pharmacy. Additionally, he has 10 patents published in the Indian Patent Journal, showcasing his innovative work. With his brief bio sketch, I would now would like to call Dr. Tantri to come over. All the stage is yours, sir. You can start sharing your screen. You can off your mic and go on. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for the brief introduction, sir. Yes, my slides. Yes, is it, slides. Is it visible, sir? Uh, yes, it is visible and audible. You can go ahead, sir. Okay, sir. First of all, uh, good afternoon to everyone else here. Respected uh, Chairman, sir, Shri Praveen Garg, sir. Professor Dr. Jiri Bakshi, sir. Director ISF Moga Pharmacy. Professor Dr. R.K. Narang, sir. Uh, Vice Principal ISF Moga Punjab. And last but not least, my mentor, Dr. Saurabh Kose, sir, professor and moderator, ISF College of Pharmacy. First of all, sir, it's my honor and privilege to be sharing, to be speaking on a platform uh, which is so highly reputed. I have seen uh, high reputed professors around the country speaks on this platform. So it's a it's a privilege and honor for me. I stand here in front of screen today with a great enthusiasm and excitement. So I believe, sir, education is lifelong process. And today we are here to gather understanding, explore our ideas, and challenge our existing knowledge. So for this lecture, this is this I have designed to expand the horizons and provoke thoughtful discussions on a topic that is called compensation in clinical trial. Sir has spoke about me, but uh, that's the modesty of Sir. Sir, thank you so much for the brief introduction. I have always been an uh, admirer. I have always been your admirer, Sir. So before starting, uh, I want to tell you about the brief, about my content, what I'm going to present today. So before starting, I'll be getting you a little bit introduction about the clinical trial, how it started, history, criteria and formula for determining the quantum of compensation in case of clinical trial related deaths, risk factor, guidelines by DCGI, that's Drug Controller General of India, compensation clinical trial related injury, related death, related serious, serious adverse events, uh, and with the case study also, procedure for compensation, compensation formula and limitations. So let's begin on the journey. So as you can see my first slide, it's about various mortalities and morbidities caused by various drugs, vaccines, medical devices. So before, uh, which, which, which can be obnoxious, life-threatening, dangerous, and sometimes 
disastrous and we can a particular term we can use for this that is catastrophic so let's start with the clinical trial sir am i audible am i audible sir sir am i audible saurabh sir am i audible audible sir audible. okay okay should i should i continue sir okay okay thank you thank you sir so basically clinical trials i am i'm going to start uh, with the clinical trials before begin anything we should know the basics uh, around uh, what the clinical trials are so clinical trials are prospective biomedical or behavioral research uh, studies on human participants designed to answer specific questions about biomedical or behavioral interventions which include new treatments such as novel vaccines drug dietary choices dietary supplements and medical devices and known interventions that warrant further study and comparison so they are uh, conducted only after they have received healthy authority ethical committee approval in the country and every country is having their own uh, governing authorities where approval of the therapy is sought so these authorities are responsible for vetting the risk benefit ratio of the trial their approval does not mean that the therapy is safe or effective only that the trial may be conducted so what is compensation basically how in a very simple language uh, how we understand uh, this compensation word so it means uh, something typically money awarded to someone in recognition of loss suffering injury or death so we have seen whatever there is a catastrophic or uh, any other condition so government pays some kind of uh, compensation to that so similar it is in the similar pattern it's here also so one of the major issues which has emerged in uh, is of compensation to research participant for clinical trial related injury or death so the government of india has come up with a regulation really regarding compensation of uh, uh, research participants so moving further if we if we go through history so every everything i i, I believe everything is having its own history so if we talk about clinical research so one of the historical which were recorded so it was edward jenner vaccinating james phipps which was a boy around a, a eight year boy uh, on 14th may 1796 uh, but jenner failed to use a control group it was a disaster that time as you can see in the uh, picture down side uh, the boy is getting uh, its first vaccination and it was not a control group it was a disaster afterwards so uh, if moving uh, for forward so there was uh, many other instances the first proper clinical trial was conducted by a, a scottish physician called james lind so uh, he the disease scurvy scurvy not known to be caused by vitamin c deficiency uh, would often have terrible effects on welfare of the crew of uh, long distance ocean voyages in 1740 the catastrophic result of ensign's uh, circumnavigation attracted much attention in europe because uh, out of 900 1900 men 1400 dies and uh, died most of them allegedly, allegedly from having uh, contracted scurvy so basically it used to be started with the mouth and the symptoms used to be you know uh, just uh, the mouth should be infectious and it used and used to cause a, a dangerous scurvy so john woodell uh, john woodell and english military surgeon Uh, of a british east india company uh, had recommended the consumption of citrus fruit uh, basically it is an uh, anti scorbutic effect from the 17th century but their use did not uh, become widespread that time it was not widespread so lind conducted the first systematic clinical trial in 1747 it's written in the history 1747 was the first clinical trial conducted by the lind the scottish he included a dietary supplement of an acidic quality in an experiment after two months at sea when the ship was already uh, afflicted with scurvy he divided 12 scorbutic sailors into six groups of two Uh, they all received the same diet but in addition group 1 was given a pot of cider daily group 2 25 drops of elixir of vitriol group 3 6 tablespoonfuls of vinegar group 4 uh, half a pint of sea water group 5 received two oranges and one lemon and the last group a spicy paste plus a drink of barley water so these used to be given uh, to all the groups apart from that only one group were, uh, also showed some effect of its treatment each year uh, may 20 is celebrated as um, clinical trial day in honor of lind's research so 20 may is uh, celebrated as clinical research clinical trial day 
so uh, let's not uh, go to the country let's find out what is happening in our country regarding the clinical research so compensation uh, into clinical trial participants in india so basically in uh, in the year 2004 uh, global clinical research industry focused towards india uh, as hub of clinical research due to availability of large number of participants since then policy makers of the governments of india have been trying to modify the law, rules and regulatory aspects include adoption of recommended set of internationally recognized ethical and scientific quality requirements known as gcp that's called code clinical practices to promote the clinical trials but the policy modifications in india attract to various international clinical cro's that's called clinical research organizations to expand their businesses of clinical trial program india hosts nearly a fifth of all global clinical trial with a huge potential for financial and scientific gains cro's uh, basically are taking advantage of getting large pool of patients highly skilled medical investigators lower drug co development cost and timely completion of clinical trials in India. So if we talk about ethical principles and provisions for uh, compensation, so the statement of compensation for clinical trial participants has been put forward clearly in 2013 version of Declaration of Helsinki. By the way, Helsinki was a Japanese scientist uh, uh, which uh, basically fought for the rights of the human uh, human subjects, particularly uh, who are participating in uh, trial. So before they used to not get any kind of authority to leave, uh, you know, whenever they want to leave. So after the uh, declaration of Helsinki was bought, so it was an kind of informed consent to the patients adopted in 1964 by the World Medical Association, which states that appropriate compensation and treatment for subjects who are harmed as a result of participating in research must be ensured. This declaration is widely regarded as cornerstone document on human research ethics. I'm repeating this declaration is widely regarded as cornerstone document on human research ethics. The Indian law for clinical trial is scheduled by 2005 had clearly stated that informed consent form must include the compensation procedure as an essential part of the document. So uh, to be continued, the drugs and cosmetic uh, rules have been amended by GSR 53E dated 3-1-2013, inserting a rule 122 DAP in Schedule Y again. The amendment specifies the procedure for uh, processing of reports of uh, serious adverse events, uh, including deaths occurring uh, during clinical trial to arrive at the cause of death to the subject and to determine the quantum of compensation, if any, to be paid by the sponsor or his representative, whosoever have obtained permission from the DCGI, that's called Drug Control General of India in a time-bound manner. So what is uh, basically, what is the criteria, uh, criteria and formula for determining the quantum of compensation in clinic in case of clinical trial related death. The member of independent expert committee discussed the various possible factors that could be considered while deciding the quantum of compensation. The following factors emerged which are uh, which are the priority list below are not on the basis of priority. So first is F1 to F12. F1 starts with the age of subject then B with the risk of death uh, then F3 income of subject comorbidity of the subject at the time of serious adverse event, uh, which means death, we are uh, talking here at the death. So fifth is expected survival, then dependency on the disease, then uh, concomitant medication, gender of subject, negligence during the conduct of clinical trial, and then duration of disease, industry versus academia versus institute versus uh, sponsor, and then expectedness. So risk factor, uh, how how uh, uh, this compensation, uh, this uh, compensation collects its uh, detail. Uh, so they have made a, a scale on which they uh, they have they measure risk factor. So it is it is in the form of 0 0.50, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, .0, and 4.0. So it uh, it is a basically a scale in order to simplify the uh, the risk factor. So first is 0 0.50, terminally ill patient expected survival not more than uh, six months uh, so 1.0 again patient with a high risk expected survival between 6 to 24 months then we have 2.0 patient with a moderate risk and 3.0 
patient with mild risk and uh, 4.0 it means healthy volunteer so on the basis of the scale the risk factor is uh, known and however in case of patients who expected uh, mortality is 90 percent for example there's a clinical trial and there there are more chances that uh, that the person may die uh, so within 30 a fixed amount of rupees 2 lakh may be given and uh, the five grade of scale is divided as uh, follows uh, and then guidelines there are uh, the dcgi has uh, its own guidelines regarding uh, regarding uh, clinical tra compensation clinical trial related injury then compensation clinical trial related death then compensation clinical trial related uh, serious adverse event other than that serious is uh, somewhat life threatening but not death completely so as you can see so there are various rules regulations guidelines so compensation clinical prior related injury so what if a person a person has uh, has received injury from uh, during a clinical trial injury occurring due to any of the following reason is considered as clinical trial related injury or death and the nominees of the subject are entitled to financial compensation one is adverse event um, adverse event of uh, investigational product uh, violation of approved protocol scientific misconduct or negligee by the sponsor or investigator or failure of investigational product to provide therapeutic effect and use of placebo in placebo controlled trial these four are responsible uh, can be considered if uh, the injury is considered there are other three factors also adverse effect due to uh, concomitant medication excluding standard care as a part of approved protocol injury to child in utero because of participation of parent in a clinical trial and a clinical trial procedure involved in the study so next is compensation clinical trial related to death what if a person dies during the clinical uh, trial so in case of death occurring in the trial subjects their nominees would be entitled to financial compensation as we see in our uh, in normal bank accounts also we always have a nominee that who will get the money after that so which will be over and above all any expenses incurred uh, due to medical management of the subject expenses of medical management and financial compensation in case of trial related injury or death shall be borne by the sponsor of clinical trial Basically, the sponsor shall give an undertaking to the licensing authority along with the application for clinical trial permission, provide compensation in case of a clinical trial related injury or death. So, in case the sponsor fails to provide free medical management for injury to the subject or uh, financial compensation to the nominee or a subject who has died in the clinical trial, the licensing authority after giving an opportunity to show cause will suspend or cancel the clinical trial or restrict the sponsor to conduct any further clinical trial in the country uh, so as you can see uh, johnson's and johnson's had to also pay 72 millions in case thinking it's iconic baby uh, baby powder to ovarian cancer this was a worldwide highlighted news as this is one of so there are the many others also but uh, here the focus is here how to calculate uh, there's a particular formula for uh, for calculating the compensation for any uh, any uh, serious adverse event or death so it's b into f into r divided by 99.37 so b is uh, refers to base amount which can be 8 lakh which can be 7 lakh which can be 6 lakh uh, f is the factor depending on the age of the subject uh, means based off workmen compensation act and then r uh, represents risk factor depending on the seriousness and severity of the disease on a scale as we, as we have discussed uh, before uh, 0 to 5 to 4 uh, we will uh, measure on that scale or through R and then we will calculate the final compensation product so the compensation amount will vary um, from a minimum of for these 4 lakh to maximum of 73.60 lakhs also depending on the age of deceased and the risk factor in case of patient whose expected mortality is 90 percent or more within 30 days a fixed amount of uh, unr2 rack should be given uh, given to the uh, to the person uh, so uh, moving for, forward then uh, we talk about compensation uh, clinical trial related uh, serious adverse event uh, which is other than death so considering the definition of sea the following four sequel other than death are possible in clinical trial subject in which the subject shall be entitled 
for compensation in case uh, the uh, serious adverse event is related to clinical mm -hmm. trial. Basically, um, where the, the authority first. clinical trial so here a permanent uh, so here a permanent a permanent disability uh, congenital anomaly or birth defect can be there anomaly congenital anomaly or birth defect as we see thalidomide will discuss it in the uh, at the end of this and uh, the end of this presentation it can be reversible serious adverse event in case it is uh, resolved uh, so a permanent disability can be there if uh, there will be a permanent disability so 100 percent permanent disability to a subject may not be considered equivalent to death of the subject so quantum of compensation in case of 100 percent disability should be 80 percent of compensation of death to of the subject and quantum of compensation for less than 100 percent available so there's a particular formula for this also which is equal to c is equal to d into 80 into c upon 100 into 100 which d is equal to uh, where d represents percentage disability the subject has suffered and c is quantum of cons uh, this compensation so uh, congenital anomaly or the birth defect for example uh, during the clinical trial there has been a, uh, a defected uh, defected child or any kind of defect in the child uh, so so uh, their uh, following situations may arise due to congenital anomaly or birth defect it is still birth early birth due to anomaly or for a and b the quantum of compensation such as a uh, cj serious adverse event should be half of the base amount of sa resulting into death which is around four lakh rupees no death but deformity which can be fully corrected through appropriate interventions permanent uh, disability so for c and d is four lakh plus medical management can be uh, given to them so sca causing life threatening disease compensation is equal to n into w n is number of days for which the uh, clinical trial remain under life threatening situation requiring medical care irrespective of number of days of hospitalization and there can be reversible as we discussed um, serious adverse event in case it's resolved compensation per day of hospitalization in such case should be double the minimum way so we two into w into n so this is the compensation has been paid by government of india uh, that is under uh, mohfw ministry of health and family welfare uh, and since uh, since 2005 or as follows as you can see the chart 2005 128 deaths then 138 140 and you can see the graph is increasing and increasing day by day so and the, and you can see the compensation at the end of the table you can see the compensation paid is also have been uh, have been improved uh, so procedure for compensation how one to one can be uh, compensated how one will be proceed what is the procedure the investigator uh, the investigator shall report all serious and unexpected adverse event to the licensing authority the sponsor and the ethics committee within 24 hours of occurrence of the uh, events in case of uh, related death or let me make you understand it will be more considered if i present you a case study ruling uh, regarding this so has uh, uh, here you can see uh, the investigate this uh, the sponsor in case of uh, trial related injury or at the sponsor and the investigator shall after analyze forward the reports on serious adverse events to the ethics committee licensing authority that is dcgi and the head of institution where the trial has been conducted within 10 calendar days after occurrence of adverse event of death this is the section of injury not death the licensing authority shall decide the quantum of compensation for clinical trial related injury and uh, and it should be and it should be there uh, for a uh, uh, it should be there it should be there for the uh, particular timing the sponsor shall pay the compensation uh, clinical trial related injury as the as uh, it should be paid within 30 days of uh, a receipt
so moving forward uh, as uh, we have already been uh, because of technical issue we have uh, always already be 20 minutes late so moving forward so this is the important thing which i would focus more it's a case study uh, for compensation in case of uh, uh, trial related injury and uh, uh, serious adverse event so uh, as you can see patient sara johnson a pharmaceutical company name farm meds uh, is conducting was conducting a phase 3 clinical trial for a new investigational drug aimed to treat a rare autoimmune disease now this is the situation you see patient here is sara johnson a 35 year old diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disorder targeted by investigational drug so uh, this was the patient detail uh, then there was a clinical uh, trial detail Sara decides to participate in a clinical trial and she meets all the inclusion and exclusion criteria as we see there are always inclusions and exclusions to every research so here they have also the inclusion and exclusion criteria the trial protocol is approved by the appropriate regulatory authorities everything was on point uh, so case study for compensation uh, continues so adverse event what was the adverse event during the trial Sara experiences and unexpected serious allergic reaction shortly after receiving the investigational drug the reaction resulted in anaphylaxis requiring immediate medical attention and hospitalization so trial related injury investigation as per the trial protocol the investigator at the trial site promptly reports the sea to farmets the company uh, the company initiates an investigation to determine the cause and possible link between the investigational drug and the adverse event and the findings were after a thorough investigation farmets finds that sara cb allergic reaction was likely linked to the investigational drug while the investigational drug showed promising efficacy in other patients sara's case highlights the need for further investigation into potential adverse reactions so this is the live example is you can see uh, the following the regulatory guidelines farmets reports the uh, serious adverse event to the relevant health authorities such as local regulatory agency FDA in US and providing all the necessary details about the trial and adverse event patient compensation and support recognizing the seriousness of Sara's trial related injury pharma takes responsibility for all the serious adverse events and provide compensation and support to Sara so this was one of the conclusions Sara's case uh, highlights so this was the formula as we have already discussed it mm, so uh, now this is also very important thing as you see material vigilance is um, is nowadays getting a, a very popular concept these days uh, medical devices are playing crucial role in in today's times uh, uh, so here i want to make you understand with the help of a uh, case study also so here the case if you first of all material vigilance refers to the surveillance and monitoring of medical devices to assess their safety performance in real world clinical settings so if i talk about case study complications with a cardiac implant and there was a patient named john smith 65 year old male with a history of heart disease medical devices uh, john undergoes a cardiac implant procedure to receive a pacemaker due to his irregular heart rhythm it means uh, this uh, where patient was having um, arrhythmia uh, so uh, seven weeks of pacemaker implantation john experiences chest pain dizziness and shortness of breath he visits he visits his cardiologist who suspects that pacemaker might be malfunctioning or causing complications so what uh, material is reporting johnson john's cardiologist properly reports that adverse event to the national health regulatory authority responsible for uh, material vigilance the report includes detail of john medical history the pacemaker models uh, the uh, the reports include uh, this date of implantation and specific adverse events in uh, experience so if i talk about investigation the regulatory authority initiates uh, an investigation into reporting adverse event uh, a team of cardiologists and material uh, uh, vigilance expert reviews uh, john's medical records examines the pacemaker design and performance and conduct tests to determine the cause of complication complications so findings as you can see uh, the investigation reveals that the pacemaker implanted in john has a rare manufacturing defect that is that cause irregular electrical impulses leading to uh, adverse events and these are the real uh, real world uh, case studies which i am presenting so based on the investigation finding the regulatory authority determines that uh, john is eligible for compensation due to medical devices manufacturing defect 
So compensation package, John's compensation pack, package includes full coverage of medical in, uh, expenses, reimbursement of any travel expenses, and then uh, compensation for pain and suffering experienced by John, coverage of lost wage, provision for rehabilitation and physical growth. And the regulatory authority collaborates with the manufacturer to the pacemaker to agree on the compensation package for John and John receives the compensation package which helps cover the medical expenses, provide financial support and uh, and uh, to complications caused by pacemaker. So these are some important. So if I talk about this is the real uh, data which uh, I have uh, gathered. This is very important slide because in India by the year 2005 to 2012. So I'm talking about it from 2.5 to 12. There were a total of 2,868 deaths of clinical participants. So out of which 89 deaths were found to be related to trial. So uh, compensation was paid to 86 patients, which is a very good record. Only three have been left. So uh, the three participants could not be traced. The amount of compensation paid, uh, it, it, it was ranged from 55,000 to 4 lakh, uh, 20,000 uh, rupees. And then INR and its assessment was not based on any objectively defined guideline formula, but was decided according to the best judgment of ethics committee. The Supreme Court of India considered the issue, directed the government to bring regulation and mechanism to ensure the safety of clinical trial participants. So uh, limitations are there are various limitations, sometimes no compensation to be paid for the failure of medicinal product uh, and uh, no compensation uh, should be paid for other than uh, any trial. So these are some things. So. Uh, so um, let me not waste some time so let me put uh, completely so these are some examples uh, where uh, there has been deaths during the clinical trial i am only highlighting few cases there are many uh, uh, there but uh, those who have garnered the uh, world names so it was posted by bbc uh, that uh, france clinical trial 90 were given one man brain dead and he was uh, and his brain has completely stopped working so it was the trial was uh, conducted by biotrial uh, a French based company with an international reputation uh, which has uh, carried out thousands of trials since it was set up in 1890, uh, in 1989. In a message on its website, the company said that serious adverse events related to the test has occurred. The company insisted uh, that the regulation of bitrals procedure were followed at every stage and uh, they have according to them they have followed every uh, every guideline uh, guideline but still that person died uh, it can happen so one of the uh, one of the catastrophic as you can see disastrous uh, uh, thing has happened in the past which gave rise uh, particularly pharmacovigilance also uh, gave rise uh, because of this uh, uh, this uh, tragedy which has occurred uh, that's called thalidomide tragedy so in the late 1950s, early 1960s, thalidomide, a drug initially uh, developed as a sedative and anti-nausea medication, was widely prescribed to pregnant women to alleviate uh, morning sicknesses. However, it was later discovered that thalidomide ca caused severe birth defects in infants, leading to limb deformities and other developmental issues. The drug was not adequately tested uh, during the pregnancy and tragic consequences results in thousands of babies being born with thalidomide induced birth defect it was uh, it took uh, to one years uh, more than one year to uh, to uh, macbridge it was the scientist who first wrote an article research article about it who who found the suspected uh, thalidomide drug uh, uh, with the connection of uh, thalidomide tragedy so uh, as you can see these are the babies uh, born with phocobilia it, it, the phocobilia is a term used for immature um, Mm, immature growth of uh, growth of limbs so as you can see the babies one and it was a catastrophic uh, only those would have been known the effect of it uh, whose uh, babies have been born like this so uh, uh, but i have i have collected one more photo uh, i have uh, researched about it i found that uh, there were some babies who still were uh, alive and they have been uh, they have been living uh, with the same deformity birth deformities so it is this uh, as you can see the uh, c uh, Lewis Medis Mansell and uh, Darren Mansell. Uh, they are at uh, their home uh, shelter. So it was uh, it was gathered by the Guardian. It's a leading journal. Uh, it's a leading newspaper in America. So uh, there I was uh, research about these two. So these were uh, these were Louis Babon at Chase Farm Hospital in Enfield, uh, Hartfordshire on uh, 
23rd June 1962 to David and Vicky Mason. Her mother has been prescribed thalidomide to prevent bonding sickness and uh, they both were born because of, uh, they have been uh, born with a defect called Focomedia as you can see uh, currently in the display, uh, but uh, they survived. Uh, so that's why they are, uh, they are, uh, experiences to the to living with the uh, deformity has been uh, has been recorded and uh, documented and manuscripted so uh, these have been uh, so because of uh, as my main main point i want to come to the point that this tragic event was a turning point in the history of uh, clinical research and led to significant change in regulatory oversight and patient safety measures governments around the world implemented implemented stricter regulation and requirement for drug testing and uh, and approval the incident highlighted the need for more comprehensive preclinical testing including animal studies before conducting human trials that's why preclinical studies always play a crucial role i think the alternatives uh, will not help until unless the drug goes it's my personal point of view maybe i'm uh, uh, you can disagree with me and the importance of uh, informed consent and rigorous safety monitoring during clinical trial is important so it is essential to remember uh, that such historical examples are used to emphasize the significance of safety protocols in clinical research and to continually improve participant protections in modern medical uh, trials mm. so clinical research today is subject to more robust regulation ethical consideration to ensure the well-being of participants and to prevent unforeseen adverse events like those experienced during a uh, thalidomide uh, tragedy so uh, this is the references i have collected i have visited various websites various articles uh, from uh, PubMed and uh, thank you so much this is all about not taking too much time although it would have been taking much longer time but due to my technical error uh, so I think uh, I have to conclude on time I think I'm on time sir I have not wasted uh, any of more time uh, so uh, it was uh, thank you so much sir it, it was my pleasure for giving an opportunity to me to share the stage and I think next guest is I think uh, Professor Geer sir so he's an yeah, institution yeah, yeah. to himself so i think uh, i am very blessed and honored and thank you so much uh, sir thank you thank you doc sir for your time and candor and uh, you did uh, splendid talk on composition guidelines in clinical trials and Pleasure, i think sir. for more future sessions into this uh, nowadays Indeed. in 21st century technical uh, issues are common so so don't worry yes that's true, it's just beginning and we will have you on more on to this it will be my pleasure sir it will be my pleasure and uh, thank you so much for giving opportunity uh, so it is uh, it's uh, it was an honor and it is an honor on behalf to me, of uh, on behalf of ykc iscp once again i'm thankful to you sir thank you uh, so much for sir. delivering this thoughtful uh, lecture thank, thank you so you. much it was pleasure sir. thank you